Okay, welcome back to my shop. Um, I acquired some saws and I have bought some saws, but I've never sharpened a saw. And some of these saws were, they're not in bad condition. Um, they could use a little work. They haven't been sharpened in a long time. Now, I just bought these saws. I bought this back saw, which we're gonna go ahead and refurbish. I really like it. It's pretty good. It's good, uh, I guess it's a carcass saw based on its size. Um, but um, it's a nice saw, I'm, ha I'm happy. And then I have this little saw, which I really like. It's a good size for me for roughing down some stock and stuff. The only problem is somebody made a nice painting on it. The painting's really nice. Uh, I live in Lancaster County. It's an Amish buggy coming through a covered bridge, which there's a ton of them around. They're really cool. Um, but the question is, what do I do with this saw? Do I pull this picture off? Um, I've been debating it. Um, my thing is it's a saw, it should be a saw. They should have never painted it anyway. They should have got canvas, but I don't know. So I'm gonna leave this up to you. Whoever says I should take the painting off and turn it back into a saw, if more people say keep it, I'll keep it and hang it up. But I like the size of the saw a lot. It was on sale. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and work on sharpening saws. But first, I don't have anything to sharpen the saws in. Traditionally, you would use a saw vise. There are a couple different kinds. And I'm gonna let you guys know right now, I have never sharpened a saw, ever. It's never done it, not once. So this is, you watch me sharpen it for the first time and possibly mess it up, but okay. Uh, it, I can always grind them down and try again. It's not that big of a deal, file them down. I'm going based on, I watched a lot of um, videos on sharpening saws. Uh, Logan Sh Cabinet Shop has some great videos. Go, go check out uh, his um, videos. They're excellent. Um, good ones on there. Paul Sellers has some videos I've watched. Uh, and um, Shannon Rogers has some really good videos. And he's much more a professional when it comes to sharpening than I am, or, you know, he, he knows what he's doing. So all three of those do. We'll start laying out the, the vise. This is not anything fancy. I'm gonna try to make it nice. I hope to be able to keep it um, and use it for years to come, but it's a shop, it's a shop jig. It's meant to hold this and that's what we do. We're gonna hold a saw. It's not fine furniture, but we're gonna try to make something that um, will not only hold it, but raise it up a little bit so I can work at a more comfortable standing height. So let's get started. Okay, so I divided this up. And basically, um, it's gonna be kind of a T section um, with angles here. Um, it's gonna look like this. So this here and this here are gonna be the two top pieces. I'm gonna save this strip. This section here gets ripped in half and these strips get added to each side in the glue up to kind of beef this, the, the main upright supports. The bottom of those will go a um, hinge to hold them together. Eventually, I will put something through the main uprights to cinch it, cinch it together. But right now, I'm just gonna use some F clamps, some basic clamps just to kind of hold the saw in place. Um, and it's gonna be a simple thing, but I can add to it by adding those clamps and stuff or uh, building in a tight down for it. Um, so we're gonna head over to the table saw and we're gonna go ahead and start cutting this up. Okay, so I'm just roughing down the boards here. I'm just cutting them to length. You can see here I'm using uh, my panel saw now because I can use that uh, with the splitter. Uh, I'm gonna rip these down um, with my other crosscut sled, I have to take the splitter out. And ever since my accident, I very rarely take that splitter out. I'm gonna rip this one down, right down the middle. And these are gonna be the two uh, uprights. And I'm gonna glue the scrap of the other two to these. Just gonna joint the edges. Cause I'm gonna glue the little leftover piece to the upright piece just to make it a little wider and I'm just running them across the joiner just gluing them up these are my uh, uh, Harbor Freight bar clamps they work really good and they were very reasonably priced I really uh, have been happy with all the clamps I've gotten from Harbor Freight 
if you haven't taken a look. Stop by and just take a look at their clamps. They're not too bad. They're and they're they're cheap. I'm just gonna set that aside and let that glue up. Okay, I laid out some lines here for a shallow half lap uh, to the to the vertical post, as well as I, I laid out uh, vertical lines here to remove some waste. Um, and I'm going to remove that waste uh, to kind of lighten it a little bit, as well as to um, maybe get some saw handles in certain areas. And uh, it's kind of really not necessary. So I'm going to be cutting that off. Now, normally I would go ahead and cut that off on the bandsaw, but my bandsaw right now is busted. So um, I'll be doing a video on that too down the road. Uh, so I'm going to cut these by hand and then just clean them up with a hand plane. I'm going to do them old school style. I think it's a saw vise. I think maybe, hey, we should do it old school style. I am going to try to cut this over on the table saw. I don't know if I'm going to try to do that handheld yet. So I'm just using that Marple's Dazuki saw, and I'm just coming right down, and I'm cutting this roughly. I'm staying well clear of my line. Um, I'm going to clean it up with a hand plane so it doesn't really matter too much. Just lopping off the majority. Um... This is good practice, and as you can see here, I really need it. Look how far off <laughs> the line I am. Um, not too big. I'll just clean it up with this hand plane. And I'm just coming down to that line. This is um, a good cut to practice on. It's not critical. If I go past the line, no big deal. If I don't go far enough, no big deal. It doesn't really matter, but it's good practice here, and that's why I'm doing it this way. I got it set pretty, pretty coarse just to remove a lot of material. And a couple cleanup passes. And I'm down to that line. Just cut off the, the sharp corners there. Nothing fancy. Just chamfering them a little. Put my uh, full dado stack in. Uh, and I'm running it through the table saw. As you can see here, it makes a loud noise when it hits that knot. There it was. Now every pass now, I should pretty much shut down that saw, realign. And just make this other cut and now I'll just go in and remove all that waste in the center now that I have those two lined up cuts and I'll just go ahead and get rid of all that waste in the middle and I'll do that to both both of them now I can go ahead and take these clamps off uh, pretty much done with them we can check out the glued surface there um, and I, I, I had those in the clamps for a couple hours. I'm cleaning up the one side here, and this is the side um, that's going to be facing the saw. I'm not really too concerned about the other side. Uh, it's going to be on the outside, and it's shop jig. Now I'm cutting the half lap on the uprights. I have the same dado stack in the saw, and I'm just going to go ahead and um, basically go through and make the half lap on the top of that, the uprights. I did change the height here. Um, the height's a little different um, because I don't want the boards to be perfectly, I want there to be a gap on the uprights. I'm just rough cutting this to shape and now I'm going to test fit. Now I purposely made these uprights a little big and that's so I can tune the fit with a hand plane. I'm using here my number five, pretty coarsely set. Um, I got this at an a antique store in the area, pretty cheap. Um, I think I spent under $40 on it, and I, I really like it. It's, it's one of my go-tos. I'm working on a number four uh, great neck that I'm going to fix up and, and use, too. Eventually, I do want to get a good like Lee Nielsen hand plane uh, as, a, as my final smoother. But for all the other stuff, those work pretty well. Um, Basically, just now going to glue it up. You can see the two half laps there. Um, I put my Rockler brush right on the type on. Uh, someone suggested that I do that, and it fits perfectly on that bottle. Um, 
was a great tip. Now just clamp it up, let it, uh, and let it dry for a little bit. Um, not too long. I am going to drive some screws in, and once I get those screws in, they're going to act uh, kind of as clamps. But um, I kind of thought of putting those screws in after the fact. So I started clamping it up, and then I realized I could just screw it. And those screws are kind of on the outside of the clamp, so they don't interfere with the saw blade. Um, but they'll, they'll add some more mechanical strength as well as acted as clamps so I could continue working. This strip on the bottom here is to separate the um, two upright boards the distance that the top boards are inset from them. I don't want the uprights come to come completely together. I want the top to come together, not the board. And you, you'll see that a little later. It's just to kind of leave a gap um, and help the top flex in. And here's those screws. I'm just driving those right in. Now I'm just trimming it up. Basically, I'm going to cut off these ends. Um, basically, just cleaning it up. Here's that strip I added. I'm just going to cut those off um, using this uh, marble saw. It's a pretty good saw. Works pretty good. Um, it can never be sharpened though. You just have to replace the blades. Uh, they're hardened. Once they harden the steel, you can't you can't resharpen it. Drilling for the hinges. Um, nothing simple, just hinges I picked up at the home center. Um, and I'm just flush mounting them on the bottom. I'm not going to do a mortise or anything. Uh, I did run a pilot hole. This pine splits easily, and uh, it is going in the end grain. So, um, but it's just it's just a hinge. It's not supporting a lot of weight or anything. Now I'm going to go ahead and clamp it together. I want to flatten out the top. So I'm going to put some clamps in place to hold it nice and tight together. And then I can go ahead and flatten and clean up the top with this number five. It was uh, kind of rocking in there, so I'm putting this clamp on the one end and it'll keep it from uh, rocking in the vise. It's kind of acting as a, a little foot. And now I can go ahead and just Go completely across. Taking thick shavings here, um, you know, trying to get the job done. Checking it for level. Not quite level here. Uh, that knot and the end grain is kind of a little hump in the middle. So I want to knock down the end grain and that knot a little more and then just take up a couple cleanup passes. I was pretty much there, just needed to take a couple more passes. So I'm going to go ahead and take my marking gauge here and basically what we're doing is we're just going around and I'm marking across the top because um, I want to bevel this so when I'm doing rip blades I can angle down um, and have it not in the way. I'm lowering it here because I want it to be a little um, deeper on, on the sides here and you'll see when I come around. There's no real measurements for this, I'm just basically eyeballing it. Then I'm going to take my number five and I'm just going to put a chamfer on it. Um, I'm going to do it with a hand plane. I could probably run it through a table saw. Probably not the safest. This is one of those things where I just go ahead and do stuff like this by hand now. Uh, a lot safer than trying to figure out how to run that through a table saw. And I'll just bring that down to my lines. You know, once again, this is a shop jig. Nothing, nothing fancy. But this is the kind of hand tool work I like. I'm going to take a block plane here, set a little finer. Uh, there's a little tear out on that end grain there. I'm just going to clean that up with that, as well as kind of chamfer and round some of those hard edges with it. Uh, it's set for a little finer cut than the number five, so I can use it to just kind of feather those edges and take all the sharpness off of it. And I'll basically now just repeat it for the other side. 
Um, same thing I did on this side, as you can see with that chamfer. The lines are there, and I'm just going to come down to those lines, clean up a little bit with my uh, with my uh, fair, uh, actually Wood River uh, block plane there. Just clean the edges. I re I really been happy with that block plane too. That's really my only new plane other than the ones I built. Everything else has been refurbished. Just trim up that end and clean it up with the block plane. Just taking all the sharpness off the little splinters. I laid it on the side and I'm taking my spoke shave here. Um, which I just got not too long ago. I really like it. I like, I had one, an older one, I wasn't too happy with. These have the thumb knobs for adjustment. It's real easy to set. Um, the other one's stripped. So I'm, I'm really digging this spoke shave. Um, I set one side a little deeper than the other. Um, so I can use one side to take rough cuts and the other side just to go ahead and take a um, little finer cut. And I'm just... I'm just easing all the edges. I just don't want any rough edges on it. It's not really necessary. When I go to grab it, I don't want to. I don't want to really feel, you know, sharp edges. They're um, just. I'm just going to take them all off with this this spoke shave. I'll just take a little sander. Just take the fuzzies off of it. I'm not going nuts with the sandpaper here. Just a little bit to take off uh, any little bumps or anything that was left. I think there we go. So simple saw vise. Um, <laughs> it looks like a lot of clamps. Now when I actually do sharpening, I'll have the clamps go in the other direction. Um, but I think it will work. Um, I don't plan on sharpening my saws all that much. You know, I don't have a whole lot of saws. And I'll probably do my saws like I do my plane blades. Come out here in the afternoon when I'm looking to kill some time and I'll just sharpen all my saws for that and do it all in one day, like I do my plane blades. I'll just go through and sharpen pretty much all my plane blades and chisels, do them in one, one fell swoop while I have my stones out. I'll do the same thing here. While I have all this out, I'll go ahead and sharpen all my saws. Um, and the amount I use them, I might only have to do this once, maybe twice a year, depending on the saw. I, think I probably, you know, probably could get away with doing it no more than twice a year. Um, so I think this will work for my situation. It's small enough to, um, to just stow away or hang up. Um, there are a couple improvements I think I can make. I do have some leather I bought and I could put the leather on the jaws. That will help grab the saw more. In fact, I think I'll uh, probably just go ahead and do that. And that just gets glued in. There are some strips up at the top I will put in. As well as, once I figure out the right height for this, I'm gonna put a board down here. So every time I go to use it, it references, will help hold it by resting here. It doesn't have to be very much, just a, just a piece of square stock. But once I figure out where my level is and, and where I, I work comfortably, I will glue that on there, and every time I go to sharpen, it'll just pop right into place. I'll be at the same height every time, um, as well as it'll add a little support from it rocking like this. Um, so I think there are some of the improvements I think I can do, and I will do those. Um, but it's a simple shop jig. There's, there's really not a whole lot to it. Okay, so this is a little amendment to the uh, saw vise. My big saws fit in no problem. But then I was like, oh, let me try sharpening this. Well, that doesn't work. So I want this one saw vise to be able to sharpen all my saws. So let's pull it apart and see how we can modify it so I can get my back saws in as well. Okay, so part of the problem is when a back saw goes in, the back, right, keeps the saw from sitting flush. Now, another thing is, I'm not really, if I put it behind, you can see, I'm not really coming up because of this, this handle here, right? So, I think what we're going to do 
is we are going to cut a groove here, right, that will allow the backs of a couple different saws, right, as well as we are going to relieve and put a decorative kind of uh, arch here. And that will allow me to get back saws in. Um, also, it will allow me to relieve some of this, um, making hopefully a nice tighter bond up here at the top. Okay, so I'm just going to lay out a line, right, right along there. And we'll do a little bit come in about there and we'll remove this section okay so I think what we'll do is I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing on the other side I traced a curve um, I was having a hard time freehand it so I got my French curve there that really helped um, and so now I'll go ahead and uh, cut that out. Put the hinge back on and now slides in but also it, it by doing this it's it's gripping much better I only have two clamps up here at the top and I can barely move that so um, it's really doing a good job uh, you know so not too bad <laughs> <laughs> 